Corley, 43rd. Okay. Same rep. How are you all this evening? Good. Hot. I thank the firemen, the emergency the servers who have offered their headquarters for us tonight. We can't thank them enough for their service and their duty to their community. We really need to appreciate them more. I'm running for the 43rd district. That's the same district that the young lady, Denise Rain, is running for. I've been a lifelong resident of the 43rd. I believe that the issues are very important in this race. One of the issues that I'm campaigning on, and they passed it in both Virginia and South Carolina, Alabama, is that there has been a crisis of a Louisville mayors across the country tearing down historical monuments and monuments to our veterans. Two years ago, I took a stand and we temporarily stopped the mayor from tearing down one of those historical monuments and we found an alternate place for it in Brandenburg, Kentucky, instead of destroying it. And I want to pass a law that says you may not tear down a legitimate historic monument Thank in the you. state of Kentucky. Someone, else, someone also asked my opponent about school busing. Well, she didn't quite answer it. And what my answer would be, the legislation was from State Representative Kevin Bratcher, and it was to make anyone go to a school that was in three miles of their home, and it was not passed through the state legislature. I would vote for that measure that Kevin Bratcher attempted to push through the legislature. We have seen... Half of Jefferson County moved to Bullitt County, and half of Jefferson County moved to Oldham County, and everybody in this room knows why. So let's be honest about that. Finally, I'm very happy that the Forum and Kentucky Right to Life has endorsed me. I am pro-life. I am pro-family. I will work every day to serve the citizens of northern Jefferson County in the 43rd District, 21 in St. Matthews, Woodlawn, Indian Hills, Portland, Butchertown, Rolling Fields, or Mockingbird Valley, Zorn Avenue, get them out there, May 22nd, let's take this seat for the Republicans. Darrell Owens was the previous state representative. He was hostile to Dr. Simon personally. He was hostile to Margie Montgomery at Right to Life personally. He was an impediment. He's no longer a chairman, thanks to the Republican majority. We need new leadership. We need aggressive leadership. And we need leadership that's going to stand up for the history of Kentucky. Thank you very much. Okay, next is Lynn Stuckel, 17th Metro District. I really didn't come to speak tonight, but I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Dr. Frank Simon. Can you hear that better? Yeah. When I first ran 16 years ago, I was told by some of the people that was supposedly campaign savvy, don't get Dr. Simon to endorse you because he's radical. So I met him and I talked to him and I found out he was radical. Radical for right to life, radical for the American way. Amen. And thank you because you've been instrumental in getting me reelected. Talking to these ladies over here from the women Republicans, I told them that I'm a conservative. My assistant says I'm frugal. My wife says I'm cheap. <laughs> and I tell you one more story about Ernie. You probably don't remember this. First running, I was first running for re-election. We had a little meeting over at Bob Evans. Julie Rocky Adams was there. Kenny. Ken Fleming. Ken Fleming and Kelly Downard, Ron Krim was there, and we said, if we get elected, we've got to get Westport Road widened. Well, during... <laughs> it just happened that during the election, I got to know Ernie Fletcher pretty well. He put in a guy as a highway commissioner who was a retired Air Force general, and he was a no-bull guy. But he came to us, he said, I don't know what the budget's going to be for the highways, but I'll get back to you. And he came back to us about six, seven weeks later, and he said, if I could just do one road in Jefferson County, what would it be? Guys, you're driving on five planes up there right now. <laughs> Does that remember that? <laughs> Running for re-election, I just have had such a great run. I've done so many good things for my district, and I think a lot of good things. Angela and I worked together for the Metro Council. Hounslane so, Park. Hounslane Park. Yay! Rebuild Hound Lane Park. But anyway, I need your vote if you're in my district. If you're not in my district and you're a Democrat, you probably could vote for me. But the board for mayor. First off, I want to thank this fine establishment for putting on this show here. Because to me, especially in the primaries, we don't get enough voters out there, especially the young ones. 
They, they do their own life, they do their own thing, but they don't realize that voting is a responsibility for every citizen. We need to put citizens first. I am a working class Republican candidate, and I want to get down to the nitty gritty. I want to put citizens first. Our utility costs are sky high. And if you look at your bill, and you see water is maybe 20% of it, and you're asking where in the heck is the other money going? Now, Angelique did say this, and I agree with her. The MSD needs to be audited. And they haven't had an audit since I don't know when. Time for the audit, find out exactly where that money's going. The pump stations are 100 years old, time to get them replaced. And guess where it's coming from? It's coming from you all. Now, one of the things we want to talk about real quick is streamlining metro government. I think it's overloaded, to be honest with you. We need to treat it like they did at UPS. Have one Pacific leader per department and cut all this bad out. Focusing on that. Putting citizens first for everything we say and do. Lowering property tax because that's all. It's your tax money. Uh, bring back vocational trade schools. Come yeah. on, guys. I mean, a lot of kids don't want to go to college. Why not bring back trade schools? I'm going to encourage that. Again, auditing all departments, no matter where they are. A good example is the Riverfront Park and the Recreational Park. I want to put those two together. I bet you I can save almost $500,000 just doing that. Why not go ahead and focus on bringing those departments together and focus on what's best? Combining those two together it might save a lot of salaries, a lot of duplication, and jobs and duties. Upgrading our transportation. We have guys living on West End. Try to get down to, why don't we go ahead and upgrade those places, those buses, where they'll be able to get from A to B. I mean, it's hard for them to get to work as it is. Next thing I want to do is I want to put down a 24-7 daycare in the West End so single-parent families can help themselves, okay? Why not take care of their kids? Because let me tell you something right now. This is what your tax money we're talking about. If you get them out there working and they pay for their own, guess what's going to happen? That's money for us. We need to have lower, when it comes to lowering violence and crime. My targeting goal is 25% right off the bat in the first year. I want to make sure we have the best police chief possible and have somebody that says, this is citizens first and this is the way it's going to be. My name is Bob DeVore, running for mayor. Look on www.votefordbobdevore.org. www.votefordbobdevore.org. Any questions? Any questions, guys? What do you go to the end? In the end? Okay. All right, thank you guys. Alex Gannis, District Court, Division 6. My name is Alex Gannis. I'm running for Jefferson Court, Division 6. It's the seat currently held by Judge Sean Delahanty. And I'm doing this because I have the credentials to qualify as the most pro-family guy running for judge right now. If you see my wife in the back, my wife is 21 years. She's got cards that show our entire family, our seven children over the last 16 years that we've had. And I care about their safety. I care about the safety of all the kids in Jefferson County. I care about your safety. And I think that we're less safe right now because people who have been charged with violent crimes are being released on home incarceration before any facts of the case are known, before it can be determined whether the people that live in that defendant's neighborhood are going to be safe from further violent acts by that potential, ultimately, that defendant. So that's, that's my, my initial platform. I'm running because I want all of us in Jefferson County to be safe. What qualifies me for that is 2013, I started at the beginning of the year as an assistant commonwealth attorney under Tom Watt. I worked there for four years, and I left and went into civil practice and did that for a year until I was asked to go back to work as a prosecutor for my friend Shelly Alvey, who was appointed by Governor Bevan to finish out Mike Mann's term in Bullock County. So currently I'm actually working in Bullock County. I still live here in Jefferson County. Everyone in Jefferson County can vote for me. It's a countywide race. I guess a little bit more about, about who I am, because that's actually the saddest thing about judge races is nobody knows who the judges are. Half the people don't even turn the ballot over. They just fill out the front. They don't even bother to look at the back because they don't know who's on it. I want you to know who I am. I want you to go to my website, votegaddis.com. Anything that doesn't get answered there, you can email me at votegaddis at gmail.com. Five years in the Army as an air traffic controller. After I served honorably, I was discharged honorably. I drove a concrete truck for seven years while I was going to college, taking care of my family. And then I, I ultimately became a prosecutor after I finished law school because I have a heart to serve. I have a heart to protect the innocent. I can't stand bullies. That's really the whole idea behind what I'm doing. People who are committing violence against other people need to be at least locked up until we know what the best results should be for their case. And that can't happen in the first arraignment. That's where it's, you know, there's just nothing known about the case at that point. If I have any questions, please fire them at me. The American Family Association is a volunteer organization. 
What does that mean? If the volunteers don't do it, it doesn't get done. <laughs> Ruth knows about that, and Walter. So I want to begin by thanking all these tremendous people that keep our organization going. Eileen Serkey, Cindy Marlowe, Cindy Vance, Linda Gottfried, Linda Clapper, Linda Rudolph, Judy and Steve Jones, Jim and Sharon Deering. Who else? Zach Kendall. Right there. Zach Kendall. He's the audio visual man. Okay, so we appreciate all of you showing up. We gave the fireman a fit, I guess, but we're still we're still standing, so that'll be all right. Okay, so next we have Mike Craven running for the third congressional district. Okay, let's give him a little encouragement. A little pat. A little applause. Everybody needs a little applause. My name is Mike Craven. I grew up in Jefferson Town. Born 1957, went to J-Town High School and Seneca both. Hired in a Ford Motor Company in 1977. Retired before I turned 50. I was blessed. In 2007. I've been working the streets ever since. I've worked with many, many different organizations. And the reason why I joined the Republican Party and left the Democrat Party is because of the pro-life movement. What really got me in my life, what really got me and my wife is when they took God out of the platform, yeah. got out of, con out of their constitution, and got out of their convention. They did not open it up with prayer in 2008 nor 2012. I know for a fact. When you separate yourself from God, yeah. you got a problem. I'm leaving it right there. You have a moral and mental breakdown of the society. You have a moral and mental breakdown of the family. When you have a moral and mental breakdown of the family, you have a moral and mental breakdown middle break on other people. That's exactly why what's happening is happening. We got to turn back to God. We got to learn how to pray. Like I, I talked to my little sister here today. We connected and I told her that if I don't make it, she will make it. One of us is going to make it. That's all there is to it. Now, I did not have to do this. I'm no rookie here. I've been in politics for 30 years. I helped run one of the most successful presidential campaigns in history. That president I'll vote for, even though I have no respect for him. He's the last president to balance our budget. 1996. <laughs> Thank you. In 1996 was the last time our balance was budgeted. <laughs> I'm kidding. Our, our budget was balanced. There's only one way to do it now. There's only one way to do it now. You have to get a constitutional amendment to a balanced budget. When you get a constitutional amendment to a balanced budget, you cannot leave the chambers until you get a balanced budget. Do you understand that? Yeah. You cannot leave the chamber until you get a balanced budget. That's my first one. The second one is a constitutional amendment to term limits. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get term limits. Now, I wanted four and eight. Four year four term, eight years. Well, he said, no, Michael, it's not going to work because if you do that, it won't be connected to the Senate because the Senate's going to be two terms, 12 years. I said, okay, then fine. We're going to go six terms, 12 years for the House and two terms, 12 years for the Senate. So it will be equal. <laughs> well, my credentials are that I, I took uh, civil rights and labor law for union labor leaders, and I also took uh, psychology for union labor leaders, and, ma and many more. A a a ever, but I'm kind of wore out and tired right now. I've been up and down Dixie Highway today. And, but I made it. I made it. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Next, we got somebody running for Sheriff Ted Kozak. You're going to have to explain your district to him a little bit. Actually, my name is Harry Theodore Kozak. That's where the Ted comes from. I'm running for Jefferson County Sheriff. I'm a Republican. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm a Republican, born and raised in Pennsylvania. My dad was a coal miner. Couldn't afford to send me to college. I joined the United States Marine Corps. I come from a family of Democrats. The Marines made me a Republican. Born here, I joined the Los Angeles Police Department. I was on the Los Angeles Police Department for 26 years. I promoted very fast, went to rank captain. I've been the commanding officer of the detective division, two patrol divisions, and a traffic division. Uh, during the time I was on the department, I went to night school. I got three degrees, bachelor's in history, master's of public administration from the University of Southern California, and a law degree. When I retired from the Los Angeles Police Department, I practiced law. I asked the California bar. Practiced law for nine years in California. Uh, we came here on vacation, my wife and I. My 
wife has Kentucky roots, although I'm from Pennsylvania, she has Kentucky roots. She has two relatives that were Revolutionary War veterans who got land down there around Boston. We fell in love with this area. Have you ever gone on vacation somewhere and said, we want to move there? That's what we did. We moved here in 1999. We love it here in Kentucky. I practiced law downtown in Louisville with Pete Soule for eight years until I finally retired. Well, I was working as an attorney for Pete that uh, I noticed how lax the court security was. The court security, if you don't know it, provided by the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. So 10, 15 years ago, I was thinking about becoming the sheriff, and I finally decided to do it. One of the things that I wanted to tell you is, I forgot to tell Dr. Simon, but he asked me if I was pro-life. I've been to Washington, D.C. three times on the March for Life. My daughter, yeah, my daughter is from Wisconsin. She's organized students, high school students, to go down to D.C. And the last time I went down was about 10 years ago. One of the things that I do in my spare time is I write books. I've written four. They're available on Amazon. Ted Kozak. Ted Kozak. The one that I want to call your attention to is The Messiah's Five. It's a story about a young boy who was a bad boy. Who, and I'll tell you what the byline is. Who would have believed that Christ had a friend in Herod's palace? He witnesses the birth of Christ and it changes him forever. Anybody who wants this book, it's free. Get out. By an emotional cop. My name is Harry Kozak. I'm running for Jefferson County Sheriff. I think that sheriff's office needs shaken up. I think they've got some people down there, the supervisors primarily, that aren't doing their job. I promise you that if you elect me, I will make you proud that I'm the sheriff of Jefferson County. My name is Harry Kozak. Thank you. Our last speaker, Family Court, Lauren Ogden, Family Court Judge. Our attorneys uh, recommended you, didn't they? Thank you so much, Dr. Simon. Thank you so much, everyone that's here tonight on your precious Monday evening, taking time away from family to be hopefully with friends here tonight. As Dr. Simon mentioned, my name is Judge Lauren adams Ogden. I've spoken with you all in 2014 when I ran the first time, and again in 2016. This is my first time speaking to this group as a judge in family court. Thank you. We did it. I have to say we did it. I was so honored and blessed to receive the appointment for my dream job from our dear governor, Bevan. And I promised him when I got the job that I was going to be a workaholic for Jefferson County families. And I am living up to that promise every day. I've been up there since January 8th, and it's it's my dream job. It's the, it's Everyone says it's the hardest, worst job at the courthouse. For me, it's the best job at the courthouse. Personally, I'm a wife for life. I'm a mother to a teenage daughter. And professionally, I was a private attorney. Yes, she's cancer free this year. I spent time practicing in family law for almost 17 years. I was also a licensed family mediator. So I helped parties avoid court where it was all, whenever it was possible. I'm a joiner with a capital J. You can name it. I'm probably a member. I get the whole alphabet, YWC, PEO, DAR. So I'm involved in the community, and I care about Louisville, and I care about Jefferson County families. I would be honored to have your vote May 22nd. Let's do it again, November 6th. Just remember to keep Judge Ogden, family court. Now we got room for a little question and answer. Does anyone have a question they want to ask somebody? Question for Senator Harris. Yes. Senator, in 2017, SB 7 was constitutional carry in the state of Kentucky. It was about to have its first hearing, and leadership pulled it, and it died immediately on the floor. That was supported by NRA, Gun Owners of America, and National Association for Gun Rights. You did not co-sponsor that bill. Are you willing to help push forward constitutional carry, which is eliminating the cost and overhead for our citizens to be able to carry concealed in Kentucky. As I mentioned, I'm a member of the NRA, a member, and I support constitutional carry. It didn't have the votes two years ago to pass, and it was not pulled. But it's, I mean, it did not pass. But yes, that is a consideration. It'll probably come up. A lot of people will say, I co-sponsored this bill and it didn't go any place. I don't play those games. I feel that my vote, either up or down, tells people the way that I vote. So many people play the game of, I co-sponsored all these bills. We have to defend the Second Amendment 
all of the Bill of Rights. I cannot do the mental gymnastics to understand why it's constitutional to carry a firearm, which you're allowed to do, and somehow a crime if your jacket covers it. So I'm a fan of constitutional carry. I would co-sponsor a bill because I think it has to happen for people in Kentucky and we've got to protect the Constitution. Further, though, I think we should continue concealed carry permits in Kentucky for the purpose of -of out-of-state travel. This summer, I I went to the Grand Canyon, and one of the most important things that we had to do on a road trip for 10 days was map out where and where, where we could and where we could not protect ourselves. With reciprocity, with the CCDW, very important, Kentucky has probably the best reciprocity in the United States, so we've got to keep that. But our citizens deserve their own constitutional rights. Yeah, my name is Matt Singleton. I have a question for both mayoral candidates. Tea Party meetings, and we had a guy named uh, Jim Waters give a demonstration about two years ago, talking about these. There was a demonstration done about two years ago by Jim Waters regarding sports arenas, taxpayer money given to sports arenas being not really a very lucrative investment for the community. And I was wondering, because I hear that plans are being talked about for a soccer stadium to be built, and I was wondering what both the candidates' position was on that and the funding and different things related to that. So, as you all may know, this already did come up for a vote before Metro Council. There was an ordinance. And the situation, and if you understand Metro Council, there's 26 of us. There are 17 Democrats and 9 Republicans. And so, 17 beats 9 every single time. And we had a situation where the vote count was going to be in favor of what the Democrats wanted. So. I went to the negotiating table with the owners, not for a stadium, for a land improvement, and had to negotiate a deal to make it better for the taxpayers. Had I not sat at the negotiating table, we would have paid an additional $5 million in taxpayer money because they would have not secured their investment, it would not have been paid off as quickly. So by my negotiating at the table, because they had the votes anyways, we were able to save $5 million for the taxpayers. So some things don't always look as they are. You have to look a little bit beneath the surface at times. And remember, this was not for a stadium. This was for a land improvement where Metro government will get a portion of that money back over the next 20 years. So it wasn't a full investment. And so understand the details. At the end of the day, no dollars went in for concrete on a stadium. A lot of the Tea Party were there at at that meeting. We went ahead and voiced our opinion. We have a soccer stadium right at U of L, brand spanking new. Why couldn't we all go ahead and reuse those resources to develop a semi-pro team that way? Then go ahead and encourage the stadium. To me, this is taxpayer money that we're using that we can use to fix our sewers, fix our transportation. Those things I think we need to have infrastructure because if you did that. We probably have Amazon downtown level. We probably have Apple downtown level. If we went ahead and strengthened our infrastructure instead of putting money, bonds, $30 million, and just... What will you do for the county? So far, our mayor does nothing for the county. He takes our money. He takes our money. Everything goes downtown. I can't even get an officer to come to my house. I had a guy out there sitting beside my house moaning and groaning. And I was scared to death he was going to get in. You know how long it took the police to get there? 25 minutes. I could have been murdered by that time. I chose not to shoot his head off sitting out there. (laughs) But, I mean, really, he does nothing for the county. What would you do? Three minutes goes by really fast when you're standing up there. I grew up outside of the Waterson Expressway. Most of my entire family lives along the Dixie Highway corridor. My husband graduated from Butler High School and grew up in Shively. My, my, I, I used to walk to Dixie Manor with my grandmother. She lived right next to St. Paul. So I won't forget about the rest of the county. I know this county inside out. I worked as an engineering technician when I was at UofL doing work for MSD. And I've crawled every back road county road in this county. I've crawled through a lot of the sewers myself. I know this town, and I will not forget. And that's one of the mistakes that this mayor has continued to make. He lives in the downtown quarter. If you look at the comprehensive plan, which we call Cornerstone 2020 right now, 
it's designed to push everything to the core. It, it shoots down the idea of suburban development and the importance. We can have suburban areas with jobs, with manufacturing, with churches, with police and fire. That's a way we have to support and grow our economy and grow our community. That can be done. It has not been done, but under my leadership, you can guarantee you'll get it. One of the biggest concerns has to do with police protection and police service. What I don't want to do is instead of putting it downtown, I want to put it right smack and right in into Jefferson County, where they have all different directions, giving 21st century technology, making connections with people, especially with the clergy, with the cops. That's one thing we need to do in their neighborhoods. We got to find ways to get those officers out there, out front, instead of behind closed doors. We need to have real interaction with the citizens and with real people. Now, one of the things we need to work on is our economic goals. We don't have economic goals, we have nothing. We gotta take care of our citizens. We gotta put them first. We had Mr. Compassion out there with his lips going 90 miles an hour, but after a while, you don't see any action behind it. So one thing I really wanna say is that we need a Republican mayor first, okay? No matter what happens on the 22nd, I would like for y'all to vote for me. I hope y'all vote for me. But we need to have a Republican mayor, and then we will work together, focus on what is best. Then almost immediately we had the drug problem, we had all these murders in Louisville, we have all kinds of crime, academic achievement, went from being the best in the world in the United States down to the last in the Western country. So. We think we ought to put God back in our public schools. Okay, so he's, she's got the uh, petitions there and government. Right, right there on the table. Can you hold one up? Yeah, those petitions. If you put your name, address, phone number, and email address on there, that's going to come up for a vote, hopefully, next time. We can make 100,000 or 200,000 phone calls in one or two days and tell you when that comes up for a vote, the bill number, the number to call Frankfurt, and with God's help, we can put in God we trust back in our school. Let's see, who is the state that's already done it? Arkansas. Arkansas has already put in God we trust back in every classroom in Arkansas. We can do it too. Watching an escape. Right part of the world and I send you to whatever God you want. Look! The government overthrown Rome. To what end? Justice. They want revenge. No! Why not? Love is the only way. When the moment comes, you will have the strength to do what is right. We let people die today. This world doesn't know a thing about love. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more.